Okay, well, we'll wait while he's doing it. But anyways, my name is uh, Michael Cunningham. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I teach at Dale Valley High School. And uh, I'm working with uh, uh, Ben in, um, in the World Affairs Council as in the Global Scholars Diploma Program. And uh, we're, we're doing some inroads with the uh, Armenian Virtual College, AGBU uh, Armenian Virtual College. And I'm currently uh, finishing up my uh, master's program in that and doing a, a thesis on education and uh, and how we're not necessarily learning everything we need to learn about certain things and it's reflecting upon uh, our foreign policy then and our foreign policy now. And that's kind of led me to a, a long road of, of which um, uh, I'm very interested in historical geographic education. I have two degrees in geography, uh, my bachelor's in geography and my master's in geography. And I took my master's in historical geography of movement of people. And uh, I've taught world geography before for uh, many, uh, many years and uh, currently uh, incorporated in, in quite a few areas, especially internationally. Uh, I'll go around and let everybody introduce themselves. Ben, if we could start with you and then we'll, we'll move uh, that way. Ben, please. Yes, hello, uh, my name is Ben Ramirez. I'm the vice president with the World Affairs Council of Austin. We're really excited about the opportunity to uh, engage more of the uh, educators as well as the students and learning more about the world and how things have um, come into the present uh, status of global geopolitics. So thank you again, Michael, for inviting me to this meeting. Okay. Stacy, could you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Um, my name is Stacy Aguirre. I am uh, the manager for Texas Alliance for Geographic Educators, and we just support geography education around the state of Texas. Um, I'm fairly new to the position. Uh, I was a classroom teacher for 11 years. I taught world geography and pre-AP geography and AP human geography um, and just fell in love with geography. Um, but I also was connected to World Affairs Council in Dallas, which was um, just career changing. I had some amazing experiences. So I'm super excited for us to um, collaborate and hopefully connect um, more teachers to the resources that World Affairs Council offers. Okay. All right, could you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about AGBU? Uh, Thanks AGC a lot. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Marine Chaturian, and I'm uh, Head of Education Affairs in Armenian Virtual College. Uh, as you know, probably you know, this is the, um, we offer the Armenian studies and uh, mainly we work with the students from abroad and diaspora, also institutions, schools and individual students. So I manage all these uh, courses and the teachers and I also myself taught for 14 years in Armenian Virtual College. Um, I'm very, uh, it's a great honor for me to work with uh, Mr. Cunningham, and uh, this is an um, exceptional experience to be involved in this project. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, and, and I think Ben was the one that introduced uh, Stacy or, or, or sent me an email, and I, I contacted Stacy right away. And the reason why I'm trying to get everybody together today is that we're coming up on the 108th anniversary of the uh, beginning of the Armenian Genocide, which I think take, took place on Sunday, April 24th of 1915, uh, when the Ottoman Turks took some of the intelligentsia and some of the political leaders out from Constantinople. And, uh, you know, and some of them end up actually living throughout the war and many of them died. But this was, this was the... Uh, uh, beginning uh, of uh, what took place. Well, actually, it started in 1894 or five with a, a, a different genocide. But uh, to make a long matter short, uh, much of this is forgotten in American history. Uh, there, there is, uh, uh, and, and I think what ends up happening, and Stacy may uh, agree, if you taught geography for 11 years, and this is my 37th year in education, uh, we we theme. A geography lessons we put in eras for history and then certain events sometimes don't take place in a theme or don't take place in the era and we kind of forget about it 
Uh, American history goes uh, very quickly to we never lost a war uh, to, uh, you know, the Korean War and then Cold War and, you know, all this kind of junk like that. We don't really dis discuss that on um, April the 2nd of 1918 when Woodrow Wilson addresses the Joint Chiefs, uh, uh, a joint session of Congress and it calls for World War One. He only called he uh, war to save uh the war to save the world from democracy, uh, save the world for democracy. It's not from democracy. I'm sorry. The the issue is, uh, at that point, he didn't declare war against Austria-Hungary. We didn't declare war against Austria-Hungary until December the seventh. Then on January the eighth of two thousand, I mean in nineteen eighteen, we are actually addressing the joint session again. This time for the fourteen points. Point number twelve was to try to uh, help uh, make a. Uh, uh, a country for Armenia or the uh, different places in the Ottoman Empire, but the United States did not choose to go to war against the Ottoman Empire or Bulgaria. Uh, we have we have really stumbled in a lot of areas. So uh, my goal is to try to uh, use a, from a historical geographic method to try to infuse a uh, history lessons with geopolitical lessons, like uh, Ben was saying. And to uh, put this and capsulize this and make it available for teachers to actually teach some important things that uh, students will be able to pick up on very easily. Uh, we're going to start uh, this project with a one day lesson for the 24th. Uh, they can use it or not. We have developed a professional development program where we teach the, the teachers exactly what to do, what has happened. It's probably lasts about 45 minutes. We're going to have it live Zoom and uh, also have a, uh, uh, a PowerPoint. We'll give them free PowerPoints. Uh, we'll give them some other uh, different things. We have videos. We have a video tour of the Yerevan Museum. Uh, we have some background information. I've also developed a 14-day uh, lesson plan, but I know that's not going to be in implemented in a lot of places, so we're, we just have a drop-in one. And... Um, we want to go from there, but we want to make uh, education interesting to uh, students. We like uh, the idea is to put you in your education, uh, or you in learning. I'll just put you in learning because there's always a you in education. It may not be you, but it's, it's it, there is a you in it. And uh, we're having so many problems, especially here in the states, about uh, people being disjointed to their education, not being involved in their education or motivation. And I think it is because we we try to do some projects that aren't really necessarily uh, interesting to the students, or they don't really have the outcome we want. So we're we're implementing some things like uh, we're doing some mock trials, we're doing some uh, moot courts, we're doing peer mediation, and then we're trying to take mediation from from a country to a country and utilizing like the Treaty of Severus of 1920, which uh, they spent 18 months. And the treaty and the treaty gets torn up right away because uh, the uh, leader of the nationalist uh, Turkish party decides to, that the the, uh, the sultan who had been since Osman's days uh, is no longer the legitimate government. And he is uh, able to take over about 65 percent of the Armenian uh, countryside and then get a treaty forced to by the allies. The United States not even in there because the United States is not an ally because the United States was never at war with Woodrow Wilson. I mean, Woodrow Wilson never declared war or Congress never declared war in the Ottoman Empire. All these facts, which I just told you, are probably 95 percent of the population of our school would not know any of these things at all. So what we're trying to do is change the face of education. And you guys are the ones that are going to do it. What do you think? What do you think, Ben? Yeah, I think that's a, a great synopsis of, you know, what the issues are with the education system uh, currently. And, and I, I think, uh, you know, as far as the World Affairs Council is concerned, we definitely want to encourage more of the students that we interact with uh, via the Academic World Quest, which I know, uh, Stacy, you're probably familiar with uh, this uh, competition that takes place every year. I think it was 2020 uh, was the first year that we had Armenia as a, as a uh, topic uh, in the actual academic world quest. And so uh, we want to see more and more of 
the geopolitical geography angle in the academic world quest um, competition. So um, very pleased to, to look at and see how we can uh, promote this type of uh, these studies in the schools uh, here in our region, but also and hopefully uh, throughout Texas. Stacy, uh, I know you didn't get a chance to see it because they were too large. So I'm, I'm just going to share them with you afterwards uh, on, on the Google doc, uh, Google slides. But uh, what do you? What is your uh, concerns or suggestions or, or what do you think in so far what you heard? Um, yeah, like I'm I'm super interested to see the the models mm -hmm. um, and see. I think that's like the mock trial and then peer mediation, um, not mock trial. Um, anyway, I'm, anyway, I'm very interested to see those things because I think you're right. Um, getting students involved is really important and having them see the, <clears throat> see the connection to, to their world um, is important and why like, why do we learn these things? Because it affects today. I'm, I'm also really interested in, um, like you said, like we just don't know, um, like I personally don't know a ton about the Ar Armenian genocide. Um, I maybe know a little bit more than, you know, just a regular American, but I don't, I don't know a ton about it. Um, but I would be really interested to hear um, the connections to um, current conditions, because um, I think that's important to do for students is to make when, especially when you're talking about history, like, well, why does this matter? Well, it matters because of this well, today. Right. Of and and, so and you, you could ask uh, anybody who lives in Armenia, uh, especially like some of the areas that used to be traditional Armenia today, uh, on the Lacan, uh Road, it's a, a connection between part of the, um, our, our, it used to be traditional Armenia, the Abrajan is blockaded since the beginning of December, and uh, they turned off the electricity, I believe, on the 5th or the 6th of this month, which is actually the same time as Christmas Eve or Christmas uh, for the Ar Armenian Orthodox Church, which was founded in 301. The, uh, this genocide is going on, is it going on today? And uh, I, I could actually explain that when we explain the other, but I, I have this one here I can share. And this is what we're gonna do for the, the geographic uh, uh, education development. It, you said you wanted to see, so I just kind of go through and kind of show everybody. Uh, here we show the professional geographic uh, education development. We have AVC, Texas Alliance and World Affairs Council. Uh, geography of a genocide, that's what we're calling this program. Uh, lesson plans for Monday, a, April 24th. Uh, this is a, 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 a pretty famous picture of showing people being forced marched. One of the things that's really kind of neat or understanding is, uh, uh, and you'll see what Telat Pasha, and Telat Pasha was uh, murdered on um, March 15th of 1921 uh, by a man named Tolerian, I'm not pronouncing it right, but I'm sorry, and in Berlin. And uh, they put they, with, on his trial, they put him actually, they, try, they tried the, the not, he says, I, I, I shot, I murdered somebody, but I'm not a murderer. Uh, it's very, it's a very interesting uh, philosophy, but they put the, the whole Ottoman Empire on, on notice in the trial and he was found not guilty. Uh, the idea was they said we were only taking Armenians from the front and putting them in the middle. And that's one of the things I, I really think we could stress on uh, politics is because Constantinople, which was uh, which we call it Istanbul today, but wasn't changed over to uh, uh, Kemal uh, Mustafa Kemal took over in twenty three. Uh, here we have a quote from Theodore Roosevelt: "Armenian massacre was the greatest crime of the war, and failure to act against Turkey to condone it, the failure to deal radically with the Turkish horror means that." The talk of guaranteeing the future peace of the world is a mischievous nonsense. Uh, he writes this to the gentleman who is ahead of the, uh, he was actually a childhood friend of his, a college uh, roommate or a college compadre of uh, Woodrow Wilson. 
and he was the head of the relief organization for many years. Uh, here's a picture of Teddy Roosevelt. And in the area of themed learning, historical geographic bridges a gap between the educational process. Theodore Roosevelt was the antithesis of uh, Woodrow Wilson. He was very interventionist. Uh, he would intervene. Wilson wasn't. Traditionally taught, and this is, shows you, I kind of blew it up a little bit different. They were trying to say the front was here on the eastern part. It's hard to say because I took this. And they were trying to take them to the center, but actually they'll start taking them from all these areas and march them in the center, which is down here or down here in the desert and killing people. Uh, what does this uh, weight? This doesn't add up to uh, weight. This does not stand up to geography. And Talat Pasha declares on January 13th is New York Times that there's no room for anybody but Turks in Turkey. Okay, here's actually his another quote, Turkey's taking advantage of the war in order to liquidate internal foes, indigenous Christians without being disturbed by foreign intervention. What on earth do you want? The question is settled. There are no more Armenians. This was said to a German ambassador. Okay, at this point where we are, where history and geography meet, we try to explain that for people that may not be familiarized with it since we're talking from a geographic point of view. Uh, what's the difference between history and geography? I go into that. I'll just kind of talk a little bit. We're talking more spatially here. And spatially is exactly what you talk about in geopolitical uh, things that still have problems in Turkey today. Uh, to understand what happened, you must understand the historical geographic principles of. And then here you go before the genocide. And this is why we use a lot of maps. This was the Armenian population in the 1900s, according to the census. You know, so it can this is uh, the latter part of the third uh, part of Armenia. And this is native Armenia around there. And then this is Eastern Armenia. This is under Russian control. This is all Eastern Anatolia. And uh, then after, at, in 2000, 100 years later, you notice that just around uh, the Northern part of the Black Sea in this area, you have some South of Turkey and Syria that fled at that time. But almost all this population's been devoid, all because of genocide. Okay, uh, this is Senator Hillary Clinton in January 26 at 12 when she flipped. I probably so as a matter of historical debate. And that's what a lot of people do, especially uh, the, the politics of the uh, uh, Turkish uh, um, uh, uh, lobbyist group is very strong. Okay, uh, to understand the importance of ge uh, genocide, we must first prove it was a genocide. So we're going to go through that. There's four factors of genocide, genocide, patricide, democide, uh, and edgicide. And we're going to teach about that. Which genocide of the 20th century was the first and still going on today? And that's the Armenian genocide. Okay, four principles of geography. We, we mentioned the four principles of geography here and how they interspace with the four principles of uh, we're talking about. Here is a picture of um, uh, different borders. The the red dots are what the our Western Armenians were claiming at the uh, February twelfth uh, conference in nineteen nineteen goes all the way from what used to have been Eastern Armenia, Western Armenia, and down here to the, uh, the, the Sicilian Armenian, okay? And then this was the famous line that Woodrow Wilson drew, uh, may or may not have drawn, that's a whole nother uh, emphasis. If you uh, remember, he had a stroke on October the 12th, I mean, October the 2nd, 1919, and basically was incapacitated. This was done in 1920, but he got a commission. He had 150 people together, and this was the border. The only problem was Kamal Pasha had gone in, not Kamal Pasha, Kamal, Kamal Mustafa, Mustafa Kamal had gone in here, and this was taken over by the Ottomans before. And then all of a sudden, this is just what Armenia is today, and these are the two provinces of uh Abrajan, that is, are, are still, uh, this was all Armenian population. Okay. Uh, genocide, deliberate systematic destruction. Patricide is stealing of people's properties and then, and then saying they're abandoned and taking over to take their money. This is done by legislation, which I have in there. 
Uh, democide is when the state runs, controls do, doing this. Several have democide, several have genocide. Not everybody, and then even the, the uh, Holocaust will have the one, but not everyone has this. Edgicide is really kind of crazy. Edgicide is deliberate uh, and um, genocide of education. The people in Armenia today cannot have this conversation because they would actually be in prison. We were going to have a debate with uh, a high school from uh, Turkey in Bursa. Turkey used to be the Ottoman capital. And their principal came down, oh, my gosh, started screaming. And uh, we came off the, 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 uh, the thing and everything else, got a lot of people in trouble. Uh, but even today, it's, it's against law, and we'll go in and explain. Okay, edgicide is by changing history. Kamal believed that the leaders of the Ottoman Empire had taken people into World War I, and the Turkish people should not be punished. Therefore, the leaders, and we're just going to tear up the treaty. And look at the size of Armenia, and then we are going to, uh, through maps, and here's a video. Uh, they can actually see, this is not Armenia, but it's, it's ABC deal. Okay, this is what Armenia looks like today, 2.9 million with a lot more in the diaspora. Uh, this is uh, the size of Armenia. This was what Armenia was supposed to be like before. Okay, this is a little video again, as people see. Uh, edge aside, a little bit, I've accomplished more towards Armenian in three months in Hamad. Uh, accomplished in 30 years. He's talking about the first 1894-95 uh, uh, genocide. Salvation of our country requires the elimination of our Armenians. That's Talat Pasha's words, not mine. Armenians settled more than 4,000 years ago. And this is uh, Aratu. Uh, this is the center part of uh, what you see, President Anatolia. Now, in, 19, in the late 1920s and early 1930s, under Kamal Pasha, uh, under Kamal Mustafa, Mustafa Kamal, excuse me, the, the president, the first president of the Republic of Turkey, he came up with the Turkey uh, history theory, which said that Turkey or the, the Turkey people, the Turks, were actually the original inhabitants of this area. Then they moved to Mongolia and then they came back. Uh, this is this is flies in the face of all kinds of history. And uh, they tried to justify this by doing some very weird uh, imbalances of uh, historical perspective. This is Armenia uh, from uh, 5th century BC to 400 AD. Okay, this is, uh, this is the high point of Armenia, uh, about 70 BC. You'll notice it goes all the way from the Caspian Sea, almost to the Black Sea, the only reason why it doesn't go to the Black Sea because the King of Pontus was his son-in-law and comes all the way down here to do part of the Levant. Uh, Palmyra, just north of Palmyra, if you know much of that, very famous city, uh, Antioquia, Antioch. And then uh, here's Tarsus down here, and this would be uh, uh, areas that still had large Armenian populations. Okay, here's the Kingdom of Armenia, about 100 AD. It was a client kingdom between the Roman Empire and the Parthians. Okay, here we have a picture. Again, this is more appropriate from about 687 to 600. Armenia is the buffer between the two. Uh, here we see Eastern and Western Armenia, and they move over here around uh, 1000 AD as the Muslims and the Persians and stuff. The Persians get taken over by the Muslims, and the Muslims take over all this and. This is a battle of Manskirt, which was a complete disaster for the Eastern Roman Empire. And uh, then they come over here. And again, during the um, uh, Middle Ages, this was a, 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 thriv a thriving uh, civilization and uh, had a real large impact with the uh, Crusades. Okay. Uh, here we go. This is kind of interesting. This is around 1300. And you'll notice here, you still have Armenia. This is a part of Armenia, it was still Armenia. And oh no, here, here's the Selkic uh, Turks. And uh, they, I always wondered, because I remember from a Three Stooges movie about this idea of rum. Rum is a Turkish word for Rome. And uh, the Seljuks said that they were the, because the, they had taken over Eastern Rome at this time. And this is uh, Selkic's go down when the Os Ottomans come with Oshman, which is a mistranslation. It's 
I don't know why I got Ottoman, but Ashman is the guy who found it. Okay, the Ottoman Ar Armenia. Here's the villets. These are the areas that uh, in the late 1800s and early 1900s were basically around 50% or, or better of Armenian population. Uh, here's Armenian claims at the peace conference. Uh, they claimed all this area for Armenia. It would be very difficult to control. That's why they wanted to have a, a, a peace treaty. Remember, the United States was actually asked by uh, the president of AGBU, who is the, uh, I can't think, think of the name, he's, he's the son of the prime minister of uh, Egypt at the time. The Treaty of Cervez is a treaty that never takes place. They, they signed the treaty, the Ottomans signed the treaty, and uh, that's where uh, Kamal completely changes around. He says these people are not legitimate. It'd be like saying today, uh, President Biden's not legitimate. Let's just overthrow him and, and we'll go from there and we'll tra tear up all our treaties. Can't do it. Okay, was, was, this is the Wilsonian, might be very famous. That's that line I told you about. And uh, here's some pictures of uh, just uh, the same type of Armenia to call. This is kind of cool. A lot of people didn't know. We uh, Woodrow Wilson sent two commissions over there, the Harbor Commission and the King Crane Commission. The King Crane Commission was actually uh, uh, was going to be support of the, quote, allies. The United States was really an ally because we're only at war with a part of them. But we sent a commission over there because we didn't really study it. The Armenians and the uh, people asked for the United States to send mandated troops. We we're going to send 40,000 troops over here to Turkey to guard the border with Armenia so Turkey would never take over. And here you see Kurdistan. Kurdistan uh, is not, never a country, but the Kurds are the largest minority, the largest group of people without a country in the world. Okay. We uh, and the King Crane actually asked for the U.S. to send troops over to all these areas, and this was going to, around Constantinople was going to be the uh, international city. Uh, it was went to subcommittees, and the subcommittee was headed out by a man named Warren G. Harding. Warren G. Harding and they, uh, voted against it. A subcommittee did, and uh, the full committee voted against it in May of 1920. is very significant because a month later, on the tenth ballot. Uh, he ends up uh, winning the Republican nomination. And at that time, I, I've always wondered why they said, well, the Republicans didn't want to be interventionists and all that kind of stuff. And he had the whole wing of uh, Woodrow Wilson was, I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, Woodrow Wilson didn't want to intervene in anything hardly. But uh, Roosevelt asked Wilson on several occasions to actually uh, try to get troops to go over there himself. Who's going to raise troops? And uh, uh, Wilson did not want to have that. Of course, uh, Wilson was gearing up for a, a third term in 1920. Uh, the person who was going to run against was probably Theodore Roosevelt, which would have been really good because that would have been his third term. Roosevelt dies in January of 1919, so that hasn't happened. Uh, Wilson strokes out on October 2nd, 1919, so that hasn't happened. Harding is, like I said, a compromise. Leonard Wood is the guy who, who's leading the first nine ballots, but uh, Harding wins, and the United States never really helps out uh, Armenia, the Turks take over all the way down into this part of uh, this. The only thing they didn't get, and even got some of the part was actually former Russian Empire. Okay. Uh, signed on August the 10th, and then it's torn up. Then we immediately replaced it with the Treaty of Lausanne. I've never known a people that lose a war and then can demand a new peace treaty to their benefit. And that's what they did. OK, so, you know, if, if I sound like I'm really excited about this, I really am, because I really think that this is cutting edge type of stuff. We can get the information out. I can explain to people. I know I'm going really fast today, but I go a little bit slow for the teachers. But for a one day lesson, this completely changes how we look at how we're teaching history and how we're teaching geography, because the political geography of this area is going all over the place. And uh and we, we, we're dealing with the same kind of uh, no transparency at all. And then I have a whole lesson on the Treaty of Cervez where the people, the students would actually take different aspects of it and they actually go through a negotiation, what it's like, and then how they feel if all of a sudden everything is just completely torn up and thrown away. I, so I have, I have that. I talked about the peer mediation. 
And I'd like to, uh, in the peer mediation, we're going to do or mediation, we're going to do a role of play between the Azure, Azures and the Armenians over the uh, this area here. It's in question, so they can get an idea and say, okay, this took place a hundred and some years ago, but it's actually still taking place this morning as we speak. And uh, let's see what else. I have a whole deal on that one. And then here you go. Say, so, and then we have a link to the tour. This is like so cool. Okay, you can actually go through the tour in Yerevan and the students, uh, teachers can go through and you can look at, well, I can't load the media on this because it's not working today for me, but anyways, it will load up. And you see close-ups of all, all the different parts of the entire uh, tour of the, of, the, of the thing, okay? If you get it a regular hook, if I send it to you regular, not going through this, it will work, okay? Then I also have a tour of the museum that just opened up in Washington, D.C. And that, you can see a little bit more, get close-ups. You can have all kinds of stuff. So the kids could get a really good idea and some firsthand knowledge of uh, what's going on. And then I had the museum, and then the last, that's the museum, and then... And then I end with this. It says, uh, what is the only genocide of the 20th century to satisfy all four aspects? And we're still going on today. So technically speaking, we're still in genocide. A lot of people don't know that. And if we're going to try and make a difference, we need to try to stop the genocide. And we need to try to teach historical and geographic principles so people actually understand how they relate. And if time for talk is over, now it's time to do it. Okay. What do you think of this one? I'll stop sharing a second. We'll, we'll go. Anybody want to comment first? Yeah, I have just two thoughts. Um, you very clearly know what you're talking about. <laughs> and I know you're going really fast, but I feel like I need more background information. Um, okay. So I was thinking, I mean, clearly I can do that on my own. But I was thinking for the professional development, maybe we could provide like a like a a one page backgrounder kind of information. Oh yeah, uh, or like a timeline or something. Maybe you have something like that. Um, well, but I can actually provide you a thesis too. I mean, it's uh, much of what you see is, is a thesis, but I can provide you a timeline. I can provide you a one page or five page or a hundred pages. That that's not a problem. <laughs> Uh, and I could talk, and, and I would talk it smaller, but what I really wanted to try to do is not try to get individual things. I want to show you a, a big picture type of thing here. We are, at, so I have to get you guys totally excited because this is something that's going to change how we teach forever. And more importantly, it's going to, it's going to bring back kids to school because right now we have a lot of people who are not really motivated here in the States. But if they can start seeing things and you can kind of start seeing that, okay, why is this important? This is important because it's linking to something that's happening this morning, you know? Oh, how come Les, uh, uh, Lisa Marie Presley's had like five minutes on the news today because she died at age 54, okay? Now that's important, but we have a hundred and so many thousand Armenians that got cut off Christmas for no power because you know they're saying it's a breakaway province. Well, it's not really a breakaway province because the Azures were actually Turks that came in many, many years after these people's homelands. Okay, and then you can say, well, why is it important to me? My family actually came from that area many years ago. So you know, we don't. We have lost our uh, importance in a lot of ways. Uh, geography is probably one of the things for most Americans is, is so totally foreign. We don't really see how things interreact or interrelate. So we're taking actual history. We're showing how it interrelates. We're showing how we've been kind of been told stories about in the past and then why it's important not, not to, to do that and have a great good grasp of a geography. You know, I, I'm very tickled to death. My, my dad was a geography major in college. My, my son was a geography major in college. I have a, two degrees in geography. My grandfather was a geography minor. He majored in forest, forestry. But I mean, you take a look at it. I've had a passion for geography for many years, but 
I, I try to combine the two together because I, I really think that's probably the biggest thing that oh, most Americans are totally devoid of. Oh, I'm American. I, I don't know where I came from or, you know, or, or that. And there, there's quite a few of us are Armenian. A good example, George W. Bush and uh, Barack Obama are both from families come from Armenia. Long time ago. In fact, when go George ahead. said, go ahead. No, go ahead. No. I was just going to say, I think that uh, like, like just a one sheet, like, like very brief summary for okay. people who are not like super um, familiar with the information, it would help them like, like be able to put into context all of the details that you're talking about, because I think they're really important. Um, so I was having to work really hard because it's been a long time since I've you know, study the, any history of Armenia. So I was having to think really hard when you were talking about like the Roman empire and things like that. Um, so I think that would be really helpful, especially for geography teachers who, it sounds like maybe you teach history, but um, yeah, especially for geography teachers who don't dip their toes a bit history as much. Yeah, no, that's what I understand. Uh, that's one of the things I, I think what ends up happening is we, we think of them as separate rooms. Room 211, room 214, we don't put them together. And because we don't put them together, we are able to be manipulated in many ways. I mean, when you think about it, if you actually knew your geography, how in 1915 could you not figure out if you're taking people out of Constantinople because you're taking them to, we're actually moving them closer to the front. We're not taking them from the front to the to the interior, uh, you know. And and we just buy this stuff, you know. And tell Akasha sitting there telling, hey, you know, hey, no one's going to bother us, uh, you know. We got Wilson in our pocket, you know. Uh, don't worry about that, you know. This is crazy. If we were going to declare war to save the world from democracy, why in the world would we not take the moral fortitude to actually say we're going to claim for a of one million people or, or better that were killed by that time. You know, you, you, the same the same argument that Wilson made in his speech could have been made for Armenia, but it wasn't. They it was just tricked on, uh, well, we're doing this because of warfare with Germany on, uh, you know, uh, on submarines. But the Lusitania was sunk almost two years before that. We had 126 people, I think, died on the Lusitania. That was probably the reason why it blew up was because it was, had arms and everything else in there illegally. You know, so uh, yeah, I, I don't think just because you're a geographer that you have to be devoid of history. I think actually it combined itself really well. But I, I, a lot of what I've learned has been in the last year or so because I have extreme interest of, uh, of the people at the AVC. So you can credit all this knowledge to the AVC because they are just marvelous people. <laughs> Can I add something? Talking to, well, talking about marvelous people, just jumping into your conversation. Uh, geography is not my field. Uh, actually, I'm more in, in the you know historical part of the, especially of this um, field, this uh, topic. What I'm, if 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 I, I hope I don't sound stupid, but I would love, I like to suggest, Mike, maybe you can add here. Again, to, um, combining geography and history, a map, not only the uh, the map of Armenians, how it developed through the centuries, the Armenian territory, but also maybe we can um, add the chron chronology map of the genocide itself, how it started with the population number, where it started the severe for massacres of Adana, for example, how many people we had there, what, uh, how many Armenian schools and churches, the occupation of Armenians, the women, especially because, you know, in Ottoman Empire, Armenian women had very high education. They used to travel to Europe, Paris, actually, to uh, acquire their education there, while uh, Muslim women uh, didn't have this privilege. And also we have theaters, we have operas, we have uh, different cultural centers, libraries, uh, 
a lot of uh, in doctors, prominent people. Maybe we can also have this timeline as a as a map, actually. And we had this experience in our ebook, uh, one of our ebooks uh, published by AVC. Uh, we can combine this as well. But this will be interesting, especially for for people who are not very much familiar with the um, Armenian genocide. And it will be interesting for them to know what role had the Armenian people in Ottoman Empire, besides of being, you know, na yeah. native to this territory. Yeah, mostly middle class and artesian and, and uh, some of the very wealthy and some of the uh, more educated than, than anybody else. Uh, and, and if you take a look at, you know, places like Lebanon and, and, uh, and Syria and some of the other places where the Armenians have been, and actually in mean, Armenians have been imported into uh, Constantinople, uh, for many years to to do stuff for the uh, for the empire as well as uh, some of the, some of their best uh, military people, and then that's one of the things they 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 take their guns to and, and stuff like that. We talk. I would include most more of that stuff into the regular lesson. I, I didn't show you the regular lesson, <laughs> but we can do that more for that one day. I was just trying to give more information to teachers on a broader scale, and then they could look at the lesson too. But I, I'd be glad to to put a one page deal together. I'd be glad to add that other, and I'll put something else in there on on this one too. Uh, I, I just really want to try to get this going to where uh, it could be a collaborative type of effort that we could actually not just talk about, but have something to be able to produce for uh, this year. Uh, with why wait? You know, if it's good, let's not wait. Well, let's try to do it now. I also wanted to add that I, I am more than happy to help out in any way. Um, I know that as a classroom teacher, you're super, super, super busy. Um, so whatever, um, however I can support, like if you want me to write the, the one page thing and then I can send it over to you and you can make any edits, like I would be happy to do that too. Okay. Well, let's just do that. If you, if okay. you, if you know what you want, you write the one page deal. Uh, let me look at it and then we'll just we'll go from there. OK, uh, if you wanted to show me what you wanted to put in on the other stuff, send that to me. We'll just put it all together. I'll give you editing abilities for the slides. I'm going to send you. We have like six different type of slides ready to go right now. One was on this uh, 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 professional development. One was on the Treaty of Cervez, which we're going to try to do for a, a mock uh, mediation. Uh, one was going to be on that one day 24 celebration. So that's one I, I want you to look at, you know, really carefully. Uh, I want this to kind of be a continual type of thing. Eventually, Ben was talking about they have a World Quest uh, quiz bowl, but I would like to actually try to see about having, and I know you've had geography bees in the past and, and all different things that the, the Alliance has sponsored in, in, in the past. I would like to try to see about having something like a uh, a deal for the Armenian genocide, or maybe even ongoing uh, mediation between two countries, uh, the Azerbaijan and and Armenia, or something to that effect. Uh, to understand, we take historical problems or geographic problems, and they just don't go away. They, they seem to fester and they continue forever. Uh, you know, we we could be a real leader here in in the states and around the world for doing something like that. AVC would be a perfect uh, uh, way to do it. We could do it virtually and we could include countries like Taiwan is very interested and, and you could literally go, uh, this, this could be a global type of thing and it would be no cost really involved. It's just basically a mindset change. Ben, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, the, the uh, you and I talked about that before, uh, the historical geography of the whole Middle East is really interesting on its own, uh, but then also overlaying, you know, how does that impact today's uh, current events uh, would be fascinating to have more and more students digging into that and learning the consequences of what uh, inaction, uh, you know, the US, uh, as well as the other allies uh, in that particular area and, and how it's impacted us today and the people that have lived there uh, you know, their an ancestry living there and, and being forced to move, uh, being displaced. Uh, you know, of course, the U.S. has a lot of that history as well here. Uh, 
uh, you know, from displacement of nat Native Americans and et cetera. So right. uh, it, it's something that can be related and having the interaction with the students in the, in the uh, you know, the, the role playing as well uh, would be really helpful to, to bring that into a uh, more interactive uh, type of education. Yeah, I see. I would like to, you know, I'd like to have people from and see what happens is we'll be talking to future leaders. So if we could talk about to future leaders today about the problems of tomorrow and they can get to, used to talking to each other, it'd be no problem 20 years from now talking to each other about stuff. But today, you know, if you end up somebody with like Donald Trump and, and you know, and, and somebody else talking or Joe Biden and somebody else talking, they don't really know these people from uh, anything but maybe television blurps or something. But if they had actually literally, you know, had grown up or talked to them at a, a at an early pivotal age, they would at least develop some sort of friendships or understand a lot more than they do as an adult. Don't you think? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It's, a, it, it's, you know, several of the projects from the U.S. State Department trying to get more Americans engaged with international, uh, you know, people from all levels, uh, from the high school level all the way through uh, senior political leaders into wow. the U.S. so that we can actually meet with individuals from other countries and learn their perspective. <laughs> See, that's where exactly I, you brought up an excellent point. I just want to try to uh, go off that a second. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. We have a, a college in Yerevan. It's a virtual college, but it's a, a college in Yerevan. We have a college and an association here in Texas. We have the World Affairs Council. We could do all this privately without a tremendous amount of funding of any sort at all. And we could make a big difference. And eventually you could get grants or whatever you want to do to, to make it better. But we could actually show leadership here is that we don't have to wait for the federal government to do something. We can do it here ourselves. You know, the federal government for many years had no interaction at all. And um, actually, this is kind of a funny story, but I, last year I sent out a bunch of stuff and uh, we got, uh, it was a, um, oh gosh, what was it? It was some kind of anniversary. So I had the mayor of Washington, D.C. announced that this was Armenian, uh, 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 oh, a day for Armenian history or whatever. And it was Washington, D.C.'s inaction that actually caused the fall of the uh, First Republic in December 1920. And then we have a mayor, uh, you know, uh, almost 100 some years later, declare, yo, that was a, a major deal. You know, we should be active now. We, sh we shouldn't be inactive. We shouldn't do some of the things that Rose, I mean, that Wilson did. Uh, but as Americans, we don't have to wait for our government to do it. We can do it ourselves. I think that's that's a, just the a speech I, I took, is if you want to make the world safe for democracy, you need to have the people stand up in each country, understand that themselves. You cannot force democracy on the person. Democracy comes from the bottom up, not from the top down. And, you know, we can't go in with guns and, and bombs and stuff and try to do that. We, we're just going to have to do it with a good education. That's why a good education is so vitally important. I went on a tangent. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to go on a rant. I could show you. I don't know how much more time you have, but I could show you a little bit uh, on that other thing. But I just, I'll just share with you. Uh, but. The other ones are actually one's a, a, a complete lesson with a lesson plan. It's got the teaks. So we have everything involved for that one day lesson. And this was just kind of a, a background. If you want to put the one page in there, if you want to put the other stuff in there, uh, I, I have the resources where you could show videos. I have some ver several videos that they're in on it. And it, it would be a good drop in lesson. We just have to sell the people on why you need to do it on, on that day. And then uh, we get enough people to do it. Uh, then maybe take a, a, a poll or see what uh, see what see what their response was. We could design some polls and stuff up too. Do you have a date for the professional development? Uh, whatever date's convenient for you. I, I'm very flexible. Okay. Yeah, I, I I'd like to try to do it sometime either the. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. Every spring break is different this year in March. 
So either the latter part of March or that, that first part of April would probably be the best, not too far away, but we could do it. If you want to do it earlier, it's fine with me. Okay, I'll look at my calendar and then I can email you. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Okay, so as far as we agree, we agree on the general idea of this. We're just going to swish out the, the other stuff so we can have everything smooth with a target date of trying to have everything done before the uh, um, uh, professional development. So everybody could at professional development, we could send out and they, they could have all the stuff ready to go. Would that be okay? Would that be a good goal then? Yeah. Um I don't know. I I can certainly contact the other World Affairs Council, but I don't want to um, step on any toes. But I think that it would be good to advertise this through the at least the Texas World Affairs Councils. Um, how do you all feel about that? Yeah, we we definitely. Uh, Stacy, if you want to go ahead and and you know you can reference us that you're working with this on this project and you've got good connections up in Dallas already, so by all means uh, go ahead uh, and make any connections with world affairs councils you like okay sure well and we'll um we'll advertise on our end as well um so yeah so if y'all think of anybody else that y'all want me to email about this opportunity let's once we get a date set and all that jazz um okay. but Did you, you can let me know and i can add them if you want to contact the world affairs council in el paso we have a school in El Paso that will, will join us, but I mean, they, they would like to get hooked up with the World Affairs Council as well. Okay, uh, what would you like to see from the AVC perspective? Um, I don't know, I, I, uh, I thought Tigran uh, would also join us, but I think he was busy. Did, did he email you uh, about uh, his uh, not being present today? I don't know, I didn't get any information. I hadn't checked my email, I hadn't checked my email have not checked my email. Yeah, so um, I'm absolutely fine with, all, um, with the project and uh, I don't know, no comments uh, besides those that I uh, had earlier. Uh, and also, I wanted to ask you to provide, I will send my email because I couldn't uh, get into the Google Docs and find all the right. materials. There is no permission for me to do it. Yeah. I will give you my email. Okay. What, what, what I'll do is when, as soon as I leave today, I'll just give you all editor's ability. So what happens is you'll get it directly from us and you can edit or whatever. Remember, it's going to be a live document. So if you want to add something to it, okay. you can edit it. Now, when I send it out, <laughs> sent out last night uh, i've been working pretty feverishly on this in in a defense of a thesis and uh what what i was trying to explain was that um i did not realize that it, it was so large i just thought we could send you the link and you could get into it so now we'll just go to the share part and you'll just get it automatically okay so you you'll be editor and and uh and if you want to add something or, or take away, that's fine. And, and I'm going to add a couple more. I think I have one on background of uh, educate, uh, historical geography. Uh, there's a couple other things in there, but most of it has to do with uh, what we uh, talk about today. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I'm very excited about this. Uh, I'm, I'm almost going to have to leave here in a little bit, but as soon as I get done, I will... I will send you this stuff. Uh, I will see some of y'all Friday next week because uh, we have a little discussion on something else. But um, this, this to me is a combination of uh, a lot of stuff I've been doing since uh, I first graduated from college. Uh, I did start out as a history major. I turned in geography. It's kind of like a history of my family. Everybody's in geography. Uh, also, uh, I've, I've told this before, but <clears throat> I have triplet daughters. And in the course of when we found out we had triplets, we started doing a lot of genealogical research. And that's where I found out 27 years old, I was Armenian, uh, or at least my heritage is Armenian. So I, I've been deep into teaching the Armenian genocide for uh, at least 20, well, I've been teaching 37 years now. So I, I've probably been teaching 35 years of Armenian genocide. And I've never 
ever had people that say, oh, I know too much about this. You know, every time you talk about it, I think like Stacy said, that, oh, I never even heard about this before. And it just falls into a crack. And Armenia is probably in the center of the earth when it comes to the great civilizations. And you could actually study Armenian history and study the history of Persia, you study the history of uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, Christianity versus Islam, the, the, the history between Rome versus Persia, the history of all kinds of different things could be studied just through Armenia. Armenia is that important. And uh, so uh, I just want to carry the torch on to get some other people ignited on this. And, and I think we got a very good start. I sure appreciate all y'all's attendance today. And we'll be looking forward to getting some emails back and forth and uh, to get this project done. Uh, any closing comments by anybody? I would like to add just to maybe on the, from the emotional perspective. For me, it's also very important. I'm not only excited, Mike, I'm happy to be involved uh, in this project because uh, I usually, I remember um, I had few uh, students who were uh, conducting uh, thesis, um, researching the parallels, the, the uh, comparative studies between the Holocaust and the Armenian genocide. And I was, in, usually they interviewed me as a, a survival of the um, uh, ge genocide uh, survival. But now being, yeah, from the first like side, being involved in the project is very ex extra important for me as, as a, um, someone who um, didn't witness but has a um, genetic memory of the genocide because it's all, it is, uh, I, I believe me, this is in our blood. You cannot even, um, even uh, I, it's so difficult, so sensitive for us to, to explain this, but you, you feel it with your body uh, that it was not so mm, long oh, yeah. ago. And, and, and what happens a lot of times when you went to church or whatever, especially if you were back 30, 40 years ago, uh, you would have firsthand survivors or their, their children would be telling stories and the stories are just horrific. I mean, uh, yeah. and it's, it's like when I was a kid, we would have people from Nagasaki or Hiroshima would come by and you could actually see that. Uh, as years have gotten by and as we have gotten older or wiser or whatever, and the people have disappeared, the story should not ever disappear because yeah. the story will repeat itself, repeat itself, repeat itself because people have never really learned. And that's what we're here. We're trying to stop that uh, repeat. Yeah, I grew up with this story, so I, I understand what you say. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm not so sure the people we're talking to, it, like here in Texas, would understand that, you know, because uh, it, it, it's it's entirely different uh, type of situation. Now. I, I, I'm going to have to uh, leave and Thank I will you. see you guys later and I'll send everything out right away. OK, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yes, Good to meet you. Bye. 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 Bye.